Hi, my name is Rick Perry. I have a website, rickcperry.com, where I have the Pro Audio Development web blog. So today's little project is for this small band that I run sound for. If you've seen some of my videos where I did the little drop snakes, then this is for the same band. And what we're doing is power stringers. And if you've done some a lot of stage work, then this is nothing new to you. This is the backyard, do-it-yourself, ghetto version. Uh, I've got $150 invested in everything here. Um, this band does small stages all the time. It's Nothing is never going to be really taxed. We're not running 2,000 watt power amps off of this stringer or anything. This is basically wedge monitors and a ground stack system. Uh, it's a JVL 18 and JVL 15 inch top with a horn. Um, so the basic layout is on each side of the stage you have a, an 18 and a, a top and then in, on stage left you have a wedge monitor. That will be one side of the stringer, the other side will be the uh, mirror image. On stage you'll have a bass guitar amp and an electric guitar amp and pedal boards. So that's really all that's going through it. <clears throat> a lot of the places that you go to only have one, maybe two dedicated circuits. I've ran the entire system off of one 30 amp breaker and hammered it all night long and didn't kick the breaker. The plug didn't get hot. So the speakers are pretty efficient. Okay, we're back with the prep work here. I wanted to just kind of outline what we've done so far. So I've cut all these jumpers that will jump from the push connectors from one side to the other. And uh, you really only have to do uh, the, the white and the black. If you want to, um, to get a little uh, clustered in there, if you're putting a lot of high current through these, then either do the multi-strand jumpers or cut two per. So you'll actually run both of them across. It may get a little tight in there because this is a shallow box. If you've got a deeper box you can do that. Um, with the current we're running we're, we don't have to do that. One wire per side should be totally sufficient. So what I've done so far is I've ran the SO cable into one side here into the knockout. I've pulled the connectors back, crimped them and soldered them and so this side's ready to go. So now we just need to run the SO in the other side um, put this in place, cut the SO cable, strip it back, put the ends on, and it'll be ready to assemble. So, basically, we're just going to take our driver, pop that out. Any electricians out there watching, I'm sorry, uh, this is. I'm an audio guy. <laughs> okay, so with this SO cable, this ended up having to be backed all the way up. Probably should have got the next step up, but it does fit. So I like to put these in here. And I'll back it up about a quarter of a turn. And I'll tighten it as tight as I can get it. Put the pliers on it. And get it. It might take a couple of different tries <clears throat> get it good and tight there we go okay so now we'll take our SO cable try to find a way where I can probably just throw it in the floor here so now it's probably going to start getting a little tight in here um, well we can go ahead and cut this I found that on this it ended up being four inches worked out pretty good so right there is my four inch mark so here's a brand new razor blade so I'm gonna bend this probably about four and a half inches and I can trim it off later you just carefully rock this over until it just splits don't cut real deep because you don't want to cut into the wire And this is the way that I cut my mic cables. And just a little 
There we go. This should be able to twist. Come right off. Now I've got some cutters. So. Cut the little strain relief insulation cardboard whatever it's properly called it appears that it's a strain relief okay so that's ready to go in well first four inches so we're going to slice a little bit off the edge of this There we go. There's our four inches. Okay. Probably break out the drill for the rest of these, but right now I just want to show you one box being assembled. All right, so now I need to put the same ends on here. So here's my connectors, and in the last video I showed you making this. So we're going to take our pliers hold on to this and give this a twist a couple of times ooh that don't want to let go there we go pulls right off let's try this one again my knuckles popping This one does not want to cut loose. I really don't want to distort it. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to take this end with the little bell part down. Tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn my torch on or my soldering iron. I say torch because I can do this with an open flame torch as well. Alright, so we don't need very much here. Okay. So now, we'll take one of these on here and all right this is our pre crimp part of the machine crimp and that closes it up I don't have a whole lot of leverage with that one. Let me see if uh, this is where I need the crimpers that I have at work. They're the lineman style uh, Stacon pliers. Oh, they work great. You got a lot of leverage, and you can do a perfect machine crimp. I didn't realize I was going to be shooting this video. that too much seems to have a good bit of leverage though I think our, uh, our iron is ready to go okay we'll flip that around
makes me want to stop and go to the shop and get my stake on pliers. Okay. We want to try to crimp that down fairly flat because that connector, I mean the uh, insulated piece, needs to slide back up over the uh, connector when we're done. Alright, I think we're okay with that. So now, we'll take our iron, clean it off in the steel wool real good, and tin it. Ooh, and she's ready. She's glowing red. I might have it a little too high. This is a uh, snap-on soldering iron. Um, extremely nice iron. If you get the solder too hot, sometimes you can temper it and it doesn't want to solder right. So basically what I want to do is get a drop of solder on there to get the heat transfer going. And then once I see the top part kind of fill in, if I can hold that just right, there we go. As it's filling in, then I'll go to the bottom and start touching and that'll wick it all the way in. in there. There we go. Now we have solder. Let me go ahead and turn this off. Clean the tip. Add a little bit for tinning. And if you get your iron too hot, um, the tin won't really stick to it. It just kind of falls off. So there's our nice little crimps and solders. So now to make it look a little neater. Let's see that one's not too hot. And I'll hold the end of this and take the plastic piece and shove it up on there just like that and the third one okay so there's the ends